Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x plus y minus 2xy equals f of x plus f of y, and we're going to be solving for f of x. I'll be presenting two methods, and the methods are very different. Uh, I forgot to say, even though it's in the thumbnail, f is a differentiable function from r to r. So from real numbers to real numbers, it is a differentiable function. So it's given. Great. And that kind of gives us a clue with uh, for one of the methods. I'm going to use differentiation. Exactly. So let's start with the first method. And the first method involves differentiation. Let's go ahead and isolate f of x plus y, even though it's not absolutely necessary. I just want to do it that way. Actually, the problem was originally written this way, but I kind of wanted to balance out the left-hand side and the right-hand side, especially for the sake of thumbnail. Anyway, so this is my equation, and I will, since f is differentiable, I'm going to diff, which is differentiate, short for differentiate, or I can write the whole thing, no big deal, differentiate with respect to y. Can I write wrt for with respect to that? Because that's commonly used. So if you differentiate both sides with respect to y, it means that x is a constant. So you're just going to treat it like f of um, y plus 1. You're not going to, its derivative is going to be 0. So you're going to get the following. f prime at x plus y, because the derivative of, you know, of y with respect to y is 1, uh, equals, now the derivative of f of x, since f, x, x is a constant, f of x is a constant, and it's going to be 0. The derivative of f of y is going to be f prime, and the derivative of 2x multiplied by y, 2x is a constant, so it's just going to be 2x. Great. So in this case, or in this equation, I would like to replace y with 0. Why? Because it's fun. Uh, it gives you f prime of x equals f prime of 0 plus 2x. Now, we don't have a particular value for x. So um, we just write it as 2x because we're not replacing x with anything. Okay, cool. Now, remember, f prime at 0 is evaluated, the derivative is evaluated at x equals 0. Therefore, it is a constant. So why not call it c? Okay, hopefully you see that. So now, uh, c is f prime at 0. Let's go ahead and write f prime again as 2x plus c. And do you see what I see? Hopefully you do. Now, notice that I do have the derivative of f, so I can integrate both sides. Isn't that awesome? So you can kind of write it as df over dx, but look, keep a long story short. Just integrate both sides, and you're going to get f from integration. If you integrate, okay, let me write it down. If you integrate a function, then you get the function itself. I'm sorry. If you integrate the derivative of a function, you get the function itself plus some constant, but uh, since we already used c, let's use d for that, or k, doesn't matter. So if you integrate 2x, you get x squared, and then plus cx, and then I'm going to use plus d. So that's the form for f of x, which is pretty cool, because uh, we kind of know that it is quadratic. It's, I think it's a huge achievement. Anyways, stop bragging about yourself. Okay, f of x plus y, remember, is f of x plus f of y plus 2xy. Now, we know that this equation is true, and I'm going to, okay, what is my goal? My goal is to kind of get to f of 0. Let me tell you that, okay? So give, let's give it away. So I want to replace x and y with 0 at the same time because that's going to be real cool. Look at that. You're going to get f of 0 equals f of 0 plus f of 0 plus 0, yay. This means f of 0 is equal to 2 times f of 0. And that basically means that 1 equals 2 if you cancel out the f of 0. But don't do it because this means f of 0 is equal to 0. Awesome. But what is f of 0? Wow, we do know f of x. Sweet. So f of 0 is actually d, right? Okay. So d is 0, which means f of x can be written as x squared plus cx, where c is a constant, d is 0, so I don't have to write it. And this brings us to the end of the first method because we're going to use the second method now. Let's go ahead and do it. All right, second method. All right, 
My second method is, as I said earlier, is different because it doesn't use differentiation. It uses a different idea. Okay. That's why I really love this problem because it illustrates two important strategies uh, for solving functional equations. Great. So since f is differentiable, it's continuous, but nobody cares, right? So here's what I'm going to do. Well, we kind of do because continuity is an important condition. It helps. So hmm, I have 2xy. It's, it's kind of sus. So what I'd like to do is I would like to bring the 2xy over. I'll tell you why in a little bit. Now, when I bring it over, well, 2xy is kind of like part of a perfect square, right? That's perfect. Uh, because x squared plus y squared plus 2xy is equal to x plus y quantity squared. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to complete the square, right? Okay. The phrase is completing the square is super duper important. And that's where the quadratic formula comes from. So isn't that awesome? Like you complete the square and you get the formula. Anyways, I talk too much. I know that, so I'm going to try this stuff. So I'm going to be subtracting x squared and y squared from both sides. And then that'll complete the square on the left. Well, there's a negative sign about it. We can take care of that. But not only that, subtracting it from both sides is going to turn out actually real cool because then you get something nice on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we're going to complete the square. Well, we already did, but if you write it as the following x plus y quantity squared. And oh man, this is real cool. I love it. Okay, so now if you look at the right hand side and the left hand side, left hand side carefully, you're going to notice that they kind of follow the same pattern. The function evaluated at a point minus that point squared. Isn't that awesome? I think this is awesome. All right, great. So we can go ahead and separate these into two pieces like that. And hopefully you see what I see. Yes, we're going to use substitution because substitution is awesome. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. f of x minus x squared is kind of special because it keeps popping up. So I'm going to call that g of x. Sweet. And that's going to give us what? f of y minus y squared is going to be g of y. And f of x plus y minus x plus y quantity squared, notice the pattern, is going to be g of x plus y. Wow, this is super duper. And then we get g of x plus y from here equals g of x, because this is g of x, notice that, and this is g of y. Oh, g. g of x plus g of y. And what does that tell you? Yay. Cauchy, yes, this is Cauchy's functional equation, and we know that this uh, equation is satisfied by a linear function with zero y-intercept. So g of x basically needs to be in the form mx, where m is the slope, so on and so forth, right? Well, if g of x is this, I'm not looking for g of x. Nobody cares about g of x. Maybe we do a little bit. Uh, so what am I going to do with that? Well, here's the thing. I made an assumption here. What did I do? I said that, okay, f of x minus x squared is g of x. So it's going to replace f, um, uh, let's replace g of x with f of x minus x squared and set it equal to mx. And guess what happens? Magic. f of x can be written as x squared plus mx, where obviously m is a constant. And does this look like the first solution? Let's go ahead and check it out. f of x, in the first solution, we found x squared plus c of cx. C is a constant, M is a constant, so they're good. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.